Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and implemented a little bit of a bottom sheet here to display some information about a particular episode. So if we simply click on an episode here we see a little bottom sheet that has a little bit more information on it and then the list of characters here being the most obvious change. Uh, and in today's episode we're just going to simply clean this up here and then we are also going to connect that exact bottom sheet to this little episode carousel that we have down here, where if we click on it, we should see that as well because we're basically trying to show the exact same information. But for the time being, let's bounce back here and take a look at the UI in the current state. If you notice when the sheet first opens, it actually kind of stutters a little bit here, right? You see that it opens a little bit and then it expands more. And that's because there is a network call associated with this page. We are fetching uh, everything here, the details and specifically the characters. So that obviously takes a little bit of time and it'll take longer if you have a slower internet connection. So if we take a look at our layout here, the reason why that is happening is because our epoxy recycler view defined here has a layout height of wrapped content meaning when there is no content in the recycler view, the height of this view is zero because there's nothing there. And then when we load in the network and we populate the characters into this list, we see that it expands up to the size of this particular element here. Looking at the list item that we use here, this thing that's in the UI right now or the preview, we see this model character list item square that has a height of 220 dp. So because we know that and because this is a simple list that just displays the characters, we can actually use that to our advantage as kind of a cheap solution to this issue. And if we set our layout height here to be 220, we can then instruct the recycler view to lay itself out a particular amount and we won't see that flickering as much. So even though there is going to be a network call when I click on this little uh, episode here, the view is already set to the correct height, so it should look pretty seamless um, as far as the snapping goes. So we go ahead and click it and you can see that the bottom sheet expands to the correct height because it knows that this has to be a particular height now. And then obviously it's in a loading state, so things kind of populate in after the fact. We could optimize this a little bit, but at the moment this does help the little bit of jumping in the UI that we saw uh, previously. So we also see that this just sits right at the bottom. We can't scroll this up, but we can definitely scroll it down. So this is as expanded as we can get it. Uh, and so we can very easily in our root layout here define a padding bottom of, um, I don't know, let's go with 24 dp. That might be a little small, but if we go ahead and rerun that, we can see now that when we click a particular item here that we get a little bit, and this is exactly 24 dp, we get a little bit of separation here, so it just looks a little bit better um, as far as that stuff goes. But let's go ahead and maybe double that to 48 dp. I think that might look a tiny bit better. And uh, yeah, when we click it, we can kind of see it. So I'm not gonna dive too much into handling a loading state here in the UI. Uh, you can kind of, if you've been following the channel, you can kind of imagine how that would go. But uh, for the time being, I just wanted to kind of clean this up here and make it look a little bit better than how it did before. And so we've accomplished that. So now the last thing here in the episode should be a short one is connecting that uh, bottom sheet here or that I just showed to this on click here inside of the character details fragment. So if we open up our nav graph here, we can see that we do have the episode list fragment here, and then we do have our episode detail bottom sheet with an action going from here to there. However, we really want to land on the character details page and also be able to get to this. So actually what we can do here is we can create an action from this page to this page. And what will happen here is that inside of our character detail fragment, it adds another action here to get to the same location, right? So it's the character details fragment to the episode bottom sheet uh, fragment down there. And this would work, there's nothing wrong with that. Once we go ahead and rebuild it, it would all be fine. Uh, however, we have basically two actions that are pointing to the exact same location, and maybe we build out another screen in the future where we also wanna get to this bottom sheet. 
So instead of having to actually create actions from each individual destination, if uh, I have both of those arrows highlighted, I believe if I just hit the backspace, it will delete both of them, which is really nice. Um, we can actually create what is known as a global action here. So as we can see, uh, if we are just in the nav graph itself, the, the root element, the navigation here, not within a particular fragment element, we can define an action here and it works exactly the same where we have a destination here which is going to be in this case the episode detail bottom sheet and then the ID here is going to be it's going to follow basically the exact same idea here um, where we have a particular pattern to it where it's action underscore and it's normally the start destination to the end destination so we can actually copy here and make the end destination the same to follow this paradigm. However, instead of it being a particular fragment or a particular destination moving to a destination, we can just say here global. So we have action underscore global to episode detail bottom sheet fragment. And so now we can see that there is another little arrow that gets defined here that isn't attached to anything other than the actual destination. It is not from you know, destination A to B, it is just an arrow into this destination. And so once we go ahead and rebuild this here, we are not only going to see this destination from the original episode list fragment break. Yep, and there goes that. So let's go ahead and just comment that out so we can rebuild. Uh, but we will now have a particular way to get to this uh, bottom sheet from anywhere inside of the app, which is fantastic. So uh, let's just go ahead and maybe rerun this stuff because uh, the build is just kind of freaking out. Okay, and so here we are, we are back. All of the little build time errors are now gone. So previously, if we take a look, I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment this here, but it's gonna yell at me. Previously, if we looked at the way directions and navigation was defined, inside of whatever fragment we were a part of, there would be another uh, auto-generated file that would have the word directions after the name of the file and then a static method to actually invoke or create or make use of the actions that were defined inside of our nav graph. But inside of the episode list fragment, as we can see defined right here, we no longer have any actions. So that's why this is freaking out, but we can actually make use of that uh, global action here. So I guess we could just change it right here. Instead of referencing the actual name of the fragment here, destinations, we can do something else. So we will set nav directions equal to the nav graph directions dot, and the same thing works here. We have a static method here that we can invoke to get to that action. And we have the episode click ID right here. And so we'll just kind of clean that up. Maybe we'll name it as well so that it's a little bit more obvious. But we've done basically the exact same thing, right? We have, instead of accessing the fragment directions, we've accessed the nav graph directions. And the reason that this is named this way is because the nav graph.xml is the name of our nav graph file. If this was nav graph file 123.xml, this would be nav graph file one, two, three directions, uh, the, the class that gets generated for us here. So you can command click into it and you can see inside of the companion object, it will have all of the global actions that we define inside of the nav graph here, available for use in any of these fragments. So if we just copy this really quickly and we head over to the character detail fragment, uh, I do not believe we have an on click here, so let's go ahead and define it inside of our proxy controller. And we're just going to say private val on episode clicked, which is going to take the episode ID, which is an int, return nothing. And so inside here, we can do the exact same thing where we just paste this in here and we call this variable like that. Right, so we basically have the exact same setup here where our epoxy controller has a callback, which is this code here, 
and we can just copy and paste this into a brand new fragment because we are accessing the global directions. It has nothing to do with the particular fragment that we are a part of. So if we go ahead and complete this implementation here by making use of this um, callback here inside of our carousel model, uh, where do we set the items, which is items. And so we're just going to add that in here and it's gonna say on episode clicked. The on episode clicked, we will just bubble this information up here and basically say root, right, do we have root? Yes, that was a very silly question. Root dot set on click listener on episode clicked with the episode dot ID right here. So then if we take a look at this, okay, there we go. So we just have a little callback defined here to bubble things up to the callback here. So nothing fancy going on, but essentially we are going to run this code when we click an element uh, in the character details fragment for on the episode carousel. So let's just go ahead and rerun things here. Okay, so we are back up and running here. We'll click on Beth Smith and we'll take a look at the first episode in season two that she's a part of. And if we click it, we get this exact same bottom sheet that we know and love and just built out. And then we can see the characters here. It does make sense that we see Beth Smith here, right? Of course, because she is in this episode uh, and we are now finding that out from two different locations and we can take a look at who else was involved in here. So actually taking a look at this, I might remember this episode, but uh, here we have it where we can access this bottom sheet from here. And then if we go ahead and bounce back to our all episodes page and we click on one, we also get that same bottom sheet working as expected in this global fashion that we've defined inside of our nav graph. So it is quite simple to go ahead and do this with really any destination that you have inside of the nav graph. You can just do this, you can add in the action uh, as we always have with the ID, the destination, and even if you wanted to, you could add in the enter and exit animations here on this global action. And then no matter where you are, you will have the same exact notification or uh, animation go from that original destination to the other one. If you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like to let me know that you've enjoyed the content. And if you notice you are not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. It helps me out on the channel and it will uh, hopefully help you out if you continue to find the content I push out useful. But for now, that's about it, folks. Global destinations and global actions, pretty easy to do and very nice uh, for us as developers to just plug and play with what we've built already. So thanks again, guys. I will catch you in the next one.